The Qingming Festival is considered one of the most important festivals in Chinese culture. And the main focus of this festival is to commemorate the ancestors, so it is really different from other Chinese festivals that are mostly celebrated for money and health. In direct translation, Qingming Festival is known as Tomb Sweeping Day or Pure Brightness Festival. Prior to this festival, families would sit together to fold paper gold ingots and visit a religious praying shop to purchase essential items made in papers for burning. So how did the festival originate? Do you know there are beautiful legends and myths behind this festival? What is the chronological order in giving offerings to the ancestors? And do you know how to identify the characters on your ancestors' tombstone? Hi, welcome back to Fearless Passport. Today we will talk about the Pure Brightness Day, the Qingming Festival that is very deep in my heart. And in the past two years due to the country lockdown, I wasn't able to travel back to my hometown. And this year, luckily the border has opened, the interstate travel has opened, and I'm finally able to visit my ancestors again. So today I will show you some of my uh, scenes of my family giving prayers to my grandfather and grandmother and I will give you some of the information that I know and the history behind of this sacred tradition. Traditionally, Qingming is celebrated together with cold food festival Han Shi Jie. And as the name suggests, cold food was served during this festival and this is the legend of cold food festival. We go back to the spring and autumn period as well as the warring state period Tun Qiu Zhang Guo Shi Dai, whereby the monarch of Jin state was taking power. So Duke Jin Xian, Jin Xian Gong, he loved his concubine Li Ji so much that he wanted to pass the throne to Li Ji's youngest son, Xi Qi. So the concubine Li Ji planned a poisonous plot to kill the prince. Looking at the situation, the prince's younger brother Chong Er fled into exile in order to avoid persecution. During the exile, it was very difficult to get edible food. And once, Chong Er fainted from a pang of extreme hunger. In order to save Chong Er, Jie Zitui sliced a piece of flesh from his thigh, roasted it with fire, and fed it to Chong Er. And that saved Chong Er's life. And he promised when he is successful, he will repay Jie Zitui with abundant wealth with a high position in the imperial court. After 19 years in exile, Chong Er endured much to a great comeback to his country. He became the monarch and crowned himself the Duke Wen of Jin. After Chong Er became the emperor, he gave great rewards to those who share will and wow with him. But Jie Zitui was a well-known righteous man and a filial son. He refused any titles nor monetary gifts and hid himself in the mountains with his mother. The mountain is huge. The duke has no choice but to set fire to the mountain. He assumed that Jie Zitui, who was filial to his mother, would definitely come out with his mother to one of the escape routes. After the ceasefire, they found a burnt female and male corpse under a big willow tree. So Jie Zitui and his mother was burned to death. In order to commemorate this loyal minister and filial son, on the 4th of April, the day when the mountain was set fire, this day is designated as the annual cold food festival to prohibit any fire on that day. Even cooking fire is not allowed. So only cold food such as rice cake is served to commemorate Jie Zitui. So you must be wondering, since cold food festival prohibits any form of fire, so why are we still burning incense and joysticks during the Qiming Jie? There's another tradition to this scenario. In the old times, paying respect to the deceased was mainly performed by the emperor and rich nobles. They performed rituals to commemorate their past ancestors for blessing, prosperity, peace, and abundant harvest. Taking care of the tomb and praying altars are very expensive in the past, and that's explained why only the rich can afford such ceremony. History fast forward to Tang Dynasty where everyone is living a prosperous life. The ancestors' praying ritual performed by the nobles and rich were too luxurious and wasteful. So Emperor Xuantong limited the rituals to a single festival to avoid exaggerated prayers. Hence, this is the birth of Qingming festival tradition. All classes of a society, no matter you are rich or commoners, can commemorate the traditions. 
tombs of the ancestors was made into an imperial-like castles signify a grand house for the deceased in their afterlife. And since the cold food festival falls on the day before Qingming Jie, over time people combine cold food with Qingming together and eventually cold food festival fade out especially during the Ming and Qing dynasty. Do you know you must make prayers to the small altar on the right side of the grave before you offer anything to your ancestors? In Chinese culture, this small little altar is named as Hou Tu. Hou Tu is representative of all the natural gods on earth which governs the land. You can say that it is similar to the mother of earth in western mythology, except that this god of earth is a male one. Before we offer joystick or prayers to our ancestor, we must pray to Hou Tu, referring to the god of earth who guards the tomb and of course guard our ancestors. Offering to the dead ancestors are usually in the form of food, cigarettes, paper clothes, shoes, phones and hell money, paper gold ingots, cars, bungalows and even a servant. Isn't it scary? In the ancient times, royal families would put gold or jewelry into the coffin before burying the dead. And since China invented paper, paper is considered as a valuable item, especially during the Han and Wei dynasty. So people started to burn paper money for the dead. It is believed that the burning paper money and paper gold ingots is to send some fortune to the deceased member so that they can bribe the officers in the underworld and afford to live a better life there. Though this is not, might not be true, but many people still carry on this tradition as a gesture in seeking spiritual comfort. And just for your information, the burning are more towards Taoism. The real Buddhism don't really encourage burning because they don't believe that uh, people uh, will go to the underworld. Most people, if you are kind, you will go to the heaven or go into a better life, but uh, only people who um, less likely will go to hell, so they will not receive the burning offering. So there's no point in burning such things. So in Malaysia, we practice Taoism, Buddhism, like in a mix so it's somehow paper, paper offerings are more like a culture than a religion thing on the first glance you'll notice the chinese characters beside your ancestors photos this gives a strong hint of the origins of your ancestry for example like mine my ancestor came from Heshan in the Guangdong regions and in case you have no idea where your chinese roots came from you will have an obvious clue here so how about the calf word on the tomb? The most popular words are the gu, xian, xian, kao, and bi. The gu simply means passing away or death. And the next character is xian or xian. So xian and xian has a little difference from each other. Usually if the person who passed away has a higher rank of social status, he or she will be granted the word xian which signifies prominent or praise. Otherwise, if the deceased no longer has any relatives, including parents and parents-in-law, he or she is now ranked the highest seniority in the entire family, then he or she will be granted the title of Xian. So for Xian, this is the title for the deceased who do not meet the criteria of Xian. So it's pretty simple. The next character, Kao or Bi, simply represents the gender of the deceased. Kao is for male, while Bi is for female. Qingming is a Chinese tradition to teach us about filial piety, regardless of the creative offerings or in various ways of performing prayers. The main focus is the act of paying respect to our family members who are no longer with us. So instead of burning lavish cars or offering bags of gold ingots, it's more important to spend quality time with our loved ones while they are still alive. Don't you think so? And by the way, I'd like to ask, do you believe in afterlife? Do you think our ancestors do receive gold ingots or enjoy chicken rice at the tombstone with us? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section. 
And as usual, if you like this video, please give me a like, thumbs up and subscribe. Comment down below with what your thoughts and don't forget to share this video to your family members in the WhatsApp group and in other platforms as well. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.